goals. So you have to know what those goals are. But when you have a FOMO moment, ask, is this thing that I want to do, is that leading me to my New York City, to my goal? Well, to continue on your analogy, if we were to take off from Nashville, where we are right now, say we're going to New York, because everybody says they've got a goal, but just hop on the interstate. Hey, this looks interesting. Why don't we go over here? Why don't we go over here? Why don't we go over here? We could be in Florida, Washington State, California before we know it. Or in just a big circle and back in Nashville. (laughs) And you don't go anywhere. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Just a big zigzag, not accomplishing anything, spinning your wheels. Yeah. So you do have to match up. Is this thing going to lead me to what I want in the future? You know how you'll see somebody on Instagram, for example, take a picture of his food or her food? Mm-hmm. It doesn't really add to the discussion at all. And I think that's what we're talking about here when we talk about goals. You want something that adds to discussion. You want something that's bringing in money, bringing in clients, getting you toward your goal. And I think it's cool to bring out a little bit of your personality. We do that at the beginning of every episode of Red Podcast, whether it's talking about dog DNA or some kind of adventure that we've been on. But that's not the focus of Red Podcast. What we're talking about here and where entrepreneurs can go would be like getting on Red Podcast and all we do is talk about our dog. You're not here for our dog, yet some people do that in their lives, on their social media, with the tasks that they do, the activities that they participate in. It doesn't get them on that goal. So think about yourself as a social media account. What's on it? What would somebody think that you are participating in based on your social media account. A lot of times it has nothing to do with what you say you're participating in. We talked earlier about wanting to be insiders, wanting to be accepted, wanting people to like us, wanting people to be interested in what we're doing. I think with social media, we have a tendency to pad all the stuff that we have on social media with activities that would do those things, make us more interesting, make us look like we're more successful than we really are. And that's what it has to do with FOMO in that we feel like we have to keep up these appearances rather than simply focusing on our business, bringing in the money, bringing in new clients. It's a distraction. Beyond FOMO, I think if we just talked about it from a distraction standpoint, it's keeping you from doing the work that you should be doing. And I think that's very dangerous too. Distraction is the number one thing that I've found that keeps entrepreneurs from being successful. It's not FOMO, it's just distraction in general. I see a lot of FOMO on social media where people sign up for every single different social media platform thinking, well, I got to be on all of them because I don't want to miss out on opportunities on any of them, even though maybe your clients are just on Instagram or just on Facebook or just on Twitter. So I see a lot of entrepreneurs do that. So you don't just want to do social media just for the sake of doing it because that is you giving into the FOMO. You want to make sure it's leading you towards your goals. If you are saying yes to things that you later regret or you feel like you're being distracted with the decisions that you're making, one of the things that I suggest doing is a 24-hour delay on decisions. And 24 hours is just the beginning. Some people are going to need more. Yeah, once you come up with an idea or see something that you want to implement in your business or try out, give yourself a little bit of a delay before you get totally distracted, put all your to-dos for that day on hold and go after it. That would be like me going to Side Hustle Nation, reading about lead pages and marking everything off my day and setting up lead pages on my website. Well, that's a major distraction because I'm having fear of missing out for lead pages. So what you do want to do is build in, as you said, David, at least a 24-hour delay on that decision. And a lot of times I do a seven-day delay, especially if it's something bigger. I give myself seven days to plan it into that next week. I don't need to do it immediately. The world is not going to change if I do it immediately. So giving myself that time to say, okay, I'll schedule it in next week, make sure I get everything done that I'm trying to do now. It keeps you on task and on target towards your goals. Working with so many musicians like I have, one of the things that you wouldn't believe how often this happens is a band, let's say they're a rap band. They say, oh, no, you know, pop music is really popular now. We're going to become a popular band. Mm -hmm. Bam, go right there. Oh, you know, opera is coming back. Polka is coming back. And by the end of the week, they've hit three or four different genres. 
you've got to stick with what you're doing for it to get some traction. I think that not sticking out one thing is one of those safety mechanisms that we put in place. We don't want success. That's not FOMO. That's fear of success. F-O-S. It could be. It also could be a lot of people get into their business or doing a blog or doing a podcast and then think the grass is greener, as we talked about earlier, somewhere else. So they switch. They get off target and go do something else. And then they switch again and then they switch again, like you were saying with the band, David, because it's a fear of missing out. And you have to stay with one thing to have success in that thing. Also, limited memory is something that really affects entrepreneurs. If you've done it once, twice, three or four times, and you haven't had a good experience, don't go back to that. If something is in a cycle, great example of this right now, gas prices in the United States, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down. When they're up, everybody goes and gets a Prius. When they go down, they forget that they were once up and everybody's buying bigger cars again. You couldn't give away a Prius. Are you doing that with your business and with the activities that you sign up for? I had an opportunity to come up just a couple days ago with a speaking engagement, and I mentioned it to you, Laurel, which brings up another thing that you should do is have a third party who's not involved, who can advise you on something, mm-hmm. not be emotionally involved. Speaking engagement, it was a good opportunity. I was excited about it in the moment. And what'd you tell me? I said, I think doing that will really piss you off. <laughs> and why is that? Based on past experiences doing similar things, it pissed you off. Yeah, when you get into it, again, talking about six months in advance, it can be really exciting to say yes to things. It's certainly a big ego stroke, but when you get closer, would you shut down your entire day tomorrow to do it? You've got to think like that. And what did you say to me? I said, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yep. Laurel is right. Let's keep that in there for the record. (laughs) If you have questions or comments, feel free to reach out to us. We're available at redpodcast.com. You know, we've got an app now, Laurel. Which is awesome. We've got one for Android. We've got one for iPhone, iPad, through the Apple App Store. So if you're interested in that, you want to hear Red Podcast via the app, search for Real Entrepreneur Development on Google App Store, Amazon App Store, or the Apple App Store. We appreciate you. If you like what we're doing, we'd appreciate a review. That will help us to come up more frequently in search engine results for Stitcher, for iTunes, wherever you can review podcasts. And as always, if you've got suggestions, you want us to cover a specific entrepreneurial topic, redpodcast.com is where to do that. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode. You've been listening to Red Podcast, real entrepreneur development. Subscribe today using iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS at redpodcast.com. Number one for me is the unneed. Number one for me, the number one reason that I see is the unmeed. Un, the number one reason that I see is un. un geez, Louise. One reason that I see a lot is an unmeed. Un,